that one more time, y'all, for story about. So the healing part of what we do is writing and expressing those thoughts about it. Maybe there's no one we can talk to but our pen and our paper or our computer as we type. And so we want you to get to a place in your life where you can share your story and tell your story, be totally open, naked, and exposed with your feelings because that is the start of the healing process. Everybody is broken. I'm going to say that again. Everybody is broken. And just like when UPS, which is what my wife works for, they deliver a package with glass in it. It says, fragile. Handle with care. So we are entering in these relationships with people, not realizing that they're fragile. And we need to handle them with care. They're just not sharing their story with you. But you're talking about what you're going through. So you're willing to be vulnerable, but everybody that you encounter and deal with is not willing to be so vulnerable. Can I be vulnerable with you all right now? I can't hear y'all. Yeah. If I'm going to be vulnerable, I need some energy. Can I be vulnerable with East West University right now? Yeah. I want to talk about an experience that happened to me and with me when I was 15 years old. This is called Mission Aboard. I remember a time that I wish that I could forget. Yet it's etched in my brain like stone. Sometimes I sit alone thinking I wonder how many abortions have the women I slept with in my past had because of me. See y'all, I just felt like today at East West University was the day for me to tell my story because for years, I kept it hidden deep down inside me. It's time for me to let it go now. I want to be free. I can't say that I know or recall every one, but I remember the first. I was 15 years past birth and I was in love with Pumpkin. A 14-year-old freshman from Simeon High School thought that I knew it all, thought that I was cool, but the Bible says, professing themselves wise, they became fools. So I began breaking rules, ditching school and cutting class, all in an attempt to get some <laughs> aspirations to become a rap star. See, I was well known to be cold with the bars, but my heart had me locked up, stuck in a standstill. See, I couldn't see past this girl. She was like the center of my world and everything revolved around her. I had never felt like this before. I was even cool with the parents who, for me, kept an open door, but that was all before she was late. And no, I ain't talking about the lunch. I'm talking about no visitors this month. And now we both scared, wondering what would our parents think. They are the ones who really cared about us and our future. We literally ripped their dreams apart, and this couldn't be made with no suture. But we got to tell somebody. We didn't know what to do. We were only babies ourselves doing what grown folks do without a clue of the consequence. Until we had to deal with the consequence of sex with no protection and, and it's too late for me to pull myself out of this one because now she's expecting. And I'm expecting her dad to kill me on sight. <laughs> now see, my father always taught me to do what's right, but now that I'm on center stage, somehow I got in stage fright. So we talked and she asked what was I thinking. And without even blinking, I said, baby, I'm not ready to be a father. And see, for her, this only made things harder. So she told her mom who forced her to get an abortion. And along with my coercion, I can only imagine the pressure at 14 that she must have been under. I was too young to know the procedure. I didn't even care. Only wish that she would have made me be there. Maybe I needed it. See, things don't register the same unless you see. And then you can believe it. And now she's left with a permanent scar from a decision that we both made. But she's the only one who paid. 
or at least that was what I thought. See, you can run from a situation, but sooner or later, <laughs> your ass gonna get caught. I felt like it was all my fault. And over 20 years later, my child that was aborted when I was at the age of 15 has now come back to haunt me. My firstborn at the age of 15 was taken away from me. He died from cancer. Too young to know the physical pain of an abortion, but now I know the answer. It's clear now. I see the picture. And it takes me back to that same scripture. Professing themselves wise, they became fools. So any East West University students up in here, let me tell y'all, please stay in school, learn from my mistakes. Don't wait until it's too late. I apologize. I'm sorry. I wish that I could go back, change, and rearrange things. If you only knew the consequences of what choices and decisions bring. See, y'all, at the time, I was only 15. And I remember a time that I wish that I could forget. Yet it's etched in my brain like stone. Sometimes I sit alone thinking, I wonder, how many abortions? the women I slept with in my past had because of me. See y'all, I just felt like this afternoon at East West University was the day for me to tell my story. Because for years, I kept it hidden deep down inside of me. It's time for me to let it go now. I want to be free. That's that piece. No. Yes, sir. Permission granted. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's never easy to talk about things that you've gone through in your life. Because when we talk about them, the hurt and the pain of that experience comes back that moment that you begin to discuss them and talk about them. So when I'm reciting that poem, that hurt, and that pain of that experience comes back. How many men have you seen talk about abortion? We just don't do that. But it don't mean that we don't hurt and we don't feel bad and we don't feel pain. So I decided to talk about something that men normally don't talk about. And so I wanted to let the sisters in on the fact that it's not just you that deal with abortion on an emotional level. And you guys got to deal with it on a physical level. But we deal with it on an emotional level too. So, Mission Abort, again, y'all, thank y'all so much. Did, did, do you, before I bring up the next um, speaker, do you all have any questions about the poem that I wrote? Uh, let's be transparent. We grow? Yes. It was touchy because are you crying right now? Yes, because I'm. You need another one? Yes. It was touching because I went through a miscarriage and a father of uh, my child didn't want to be there for me. He wanted me to get an abortion. And he stressed me out so bad for I had a miscarriage. And it was like, he basically already was doing me wrong. And it was like, I didn't have no support. And I felt like, you're supposed to be that for me when you do big and thin. already accusing me of cheating. When you were doing all the dirt, I just was still with you no matter what. Because when I love hard, I love hard. But it was just like, the pregnancy thing just what made me go through a, a depression zone. Shut everybody down. I don't want to be bothered with you. I took my anger out of my family and I shouldn't have. It was a man I was mad at, not my family. And I felt so bad for that. And it was like, but to hear a man speak on that, it's some real stuff. Like, to hear, like, what I went through and a man. Speak on that. And that's what touched me. And it's like, I don't even talk about this. Because it still hurts me to this day. And I want to 
child for that, like, but I'm looking at the right me. Yeah. And I have trust issues bad for them. It's like, I can get over a man with no problems, but with this, I can't. I got my wall up. I don't trust no man. Let's give us some love, y'all. What I want to say to you is that one thing, your words condemn or they set free. So what I want you to consider is to stop saying, I can't get over this. Because I want you to trust God. And God is bigger than your problems. And he's bigger than what you've been through. Let's, let's take our focus off the man. This is between you and this is between the creator right now. Let's move the man out of the way and ask God what he wanted you to learn from this whole process. Ask him what he wanted you to see from this whole process because if he was the man that you were describing him to be, then you needed not to be connected to him in the first place. So he removed him from your life. So Let's start a new day from today. Because today is the first day of what? The rest of your life. And, and the glass is still half full. We're not going to say it's half empty. We're going to say it's half full. We're going to look at things in an optimistic perspective. Because this is... What you just did today, you've never done this before. You never opened up about it. What you just did today is the start of the healing process. And we love you. We're here to support you. And you got a strong base and you got a strong foundation now. All right? Give it up for Miss Victoria for telling her story.